Okay, and so um, as we think about the future of the corporation, the purpose um, uh, ought to be stated. And I would offer up, and, and we can debate it, I suppose, but I would offer up the creation of a just and sustainable global economy. I think that's what we're talking about here. So maybe that's a 21st century um, objective that uh, mirrors what uh, was developed here in Boston in the late 18th century. Um, also, I think one of the other observation that I hope we keep in mind is this painting to me, in some ways, I'm not sure we've learned very much because um, indeed you had men uh, and one, one boy, uh, men <laughs> um, in doing the work in this assembly um, and women observing. And in some ways, as a couple of people said yesterday, uh, the debate here, uh, I, I think at times was very much focused on, uh, on the United States and uh, potentially maybe with a little bit of British flavor added in. And in fact, um, I was thinking overnight that if the SEC uh, tomorrow were to completely remake the rules that govern corporations uh, chartered in the United States, um, it, it would be partial and, and in some ways um, counterproductive because uh, the world has changed very, very rapidly. As the World Economic Forum uh, put it in their meeting in Davos this past January, uh, it's all about the shifting power equation. And uh, we have very, very powerful actors in other parts of the world with very, very different objectives, uh, different cultures, different corporate governance structures, different legal traditions, a whole range of ways um, that I think we, we cannot succeed in shaping the future uh, of the corporation if we don't think about that broader context. So what we need to have is a restoration of the law of trusts which obligates these people to act. And as we discussed yesterday, there's been vast erosion. The law of economics has taken over. The law of trust now basically is, if it's cost effective, do it. If it isn't, pay the damages. Now that's not acceptable. We've got to have a change in the law of trust. Now when you get to having engaged owners across the spectrum of political and social opinion, what is it that they're going to ask companies to do? And this is relatively straightforward. They have to take the leadership in demanding a change in the accounting practices. Now it's very simple. There isn't a person alive who thinks that current accounting provides a useful facility for virtually any purpose other than historic records. What did we hear yesterday? 30% of the value of companies can be derived from the figures in their published financial statements. We know that the financial statements are not useful. Indeed, in many respects, we know that the financial statements are genuinely harmful. How is that? Well, they're harmful in the sense that they don't stress what, which is good, what is good, which is, say, intellectual power, and they eliminate what's bad, which on the environmental side is the external costs of the functioning of the corporation. That isn't the way to get an answer. You only get an answer by having the owners actively involved. And so I say, with great optimism, there is a clear way in which we can begin the process of making corporate functioning harmonious with human welfare. And it is not a new notion. It does not require more expense. It does not require new agencies. It simply requires that those people who are majority owners of all the companies in the world, who are obligated under existing trust law to exercise their responsibility for the benefit of all the people, which is the hundreds of millions of people who are owners of mutual funds, who are or beneficiaries of employee stock plan. This begins to legitimate the corporate power. So here is a notion that has about it the great virtue of making sense. Now how do we get from here to there? I offer here some preliminary thoughts on what a definition of long-term investment might be. Thank you. Uh, I believe that a full definition of long-term investing needs to take into account three factors. The benefits of holding stocks for a long period of time, the incorporation of environmental, social, and corporate governance factors into stock valuations, and the willingness of investors to add value to their investments. I combine these three factors into the following definition. 
Long-term investors speculate on the value of corporations to society and the environment while simultaneously seeking to enhance that value at the company, industry, and societal levels. This differs from today's mainstream definition of the role of investors, which values their success only in the maximizing of relative stock returns. When the market is valued according to short-term measurement, that is stock prices, and when managers' performance is measured against these prices, long-term investing becomes impossible. In today's financial markets, investors are relegated to the role of price takers, not value makers.